All right, guys, so I'm going to show you a technique in Krita real quick that can also be useful for Blender when working with masks and sculpting, or maybe even working with masks inside of Substance Painter. So let's just jump into this and kind of fly through it real quick. But basically, there's two types of brushes when working in digital art like this. There's going to be your hard round brushes and your soft round brushes. A lot of times, it's very easy to sketch with a soft round brush, but you oftentimes have to go back and ink it, right? So that you're going to use a hard round brush and trace out all these edges, basically. Uh, make them look nice and neat. Now, you don't actually have to do that necessarily. You can actually work it out a little bit um, with a couple of different tricks. So uh, just keep that in mind. If we had a sketch like this, thing number one, first of all, you do have to clean it up. So if you had a nice loose sketch, you don't want like large amounts of shading throughout the whole thing don't want little small transparent pixels things like that but you do want to create something like a line art and try to keep it nice and neat and clean all right now in blender when you're sculpting let's say you're creating a mask in blender and you have something like this going on all right got all sharp edges or something perhaps right and you do a fill on that okay? and you'd have your mask now here's the thing for this soft round sketch what we can do is we can control J and duplicate it. We can start to fill it because it's all transparent pixels. Every time transparent pixel lays on top of a transparent pixel, you get this. It starts to fill it in basically. Okay. So you'll notice that it's turning from a soft round. If we keep control J in it, it's turning from soft round to a hard alias edge, basically, right? We can go through this whole thing, shift click, control E, collapse them down. And we can keep control J and, and uh, duplicating basically. Control E to collapse those down. We'll get something like this at some point. Okay. Maybe not ideal, but the thing about digital art, it's rather interesting. There's different types of filtering. So when we press T or Control T, we'll see that we have filtering by cubic. We did this line art like this and we started duplicating. We created an aliased edge basically. The same over here for that piece. Now, if I was to make this smaller though, I'm just drag it smaller and hold shift about halfway maybe and hit enter. It doesn't have to be halfway, but you see the edges start to look smooth again, even though we just downsize it because of the bicubic filtering creates like an anti-aliasing effect more or less. And this is the same way you would do baking in blender. Basically you bake at twice the resolution and bring it back down it creates anti-aliasing effects, right? So that's what you usually have to do over there. But so this kind of works, but when we want to go up in size, we run into an issue, right? It starts to look very bad and it becomes pixelated again or aliased or whatever the case, right? So what do we do with that? Well, it's actually kind of interesting. You can add a paint layer in the background. We're going to make it white. We're going to fill it. We fill it with white. We collapse this to that. And we have to do that here in Krita. Uh, I don't know if it works the same in all software, but here in Krita, we're going to do this. And we can filter blur Gaussian blur. So we know that if we add a blur, we can start to blur it up, right? And if we blur it enough, we don't see none of that aliasing effect, but we've lost all of the clarity of the edges, right? Now take note on the sharp corners here. We blur more and more and more. They become very soft, okay? This is actually going to be something you want to do at some point, believe it or not. Uh, but we can do this, right? I'm going to get it blurred just enough that it doesn't look pixelated, but not too much. Okay. And we can click OK. Now we use filters, adjust levels. So the way the levels works is basically you're going to increase contrast. And you do that by squeezing this handle and this handle together. Okay. Now, if you squeeze it to the left here, it's going to make thinner lines or push the shapes inwards. If you squeeze it to the right, it's going to make them more bold. So for a shape, it actually is like the um, basically it's like pushing out the silhouette, right? But on, if you went the other way, it would squeeze it in basically. So you'll see the size changes, right? So the main thing here though, is we're just going to kind of squeeze it where, um, we think it makes the most sense, tighten it up. You can see it actually does sharpen up our edges here. And if we were to make these even tighter, it's going to eventually become pixelated again, but we can sharpen them up like this. Uh, so it's rather interesting that we can do this now so we recovered our lines now it's not perfect but it, in a you know in a pinch you could possibly utilize this but for our shape all of our corners became rounded 
So when you're sculpting in Blender, a lot of times what you do is you take your mask, you smooth it, and then you um, increase the contrast again, and you'll eventually end up with this. So you can have a pretty rough selection. But let me just demo that real quick. We'll start with this uh, cube here. Let me just remesh it. And um, let me mesh filters smooth it as well while we're at it. So we can just have something a little bit better to work with maybe. Now, so if we're working with like a regular mask tool, think of this as like your soft round brush, right? Um, let's take that resolution up a little higher. So the mask tool you can think of as like a soft round brush, right? Or hard round if you want, I guess. Which is great. But if we had blurred it, it was softer. Hold shift. Right? You can increase contrast. And you see that edge there will tighten up, turn auto iteration off perhaps. So it sharpens up, right? All right, this is good. This is what we want because now we can use polyline mask or lasso mask, for example. A, clear the mask. We create a shape with the polyline mask or lasso. Sharp corners, jagged edges look familiar. So when we press A and we smooth it, and we crank the values up, you can think of the faces acting like pixels in the 2D editor. And now we can smooth it heavily and then increase contrast and balance it out. Get something like this going. Okay, so it's not gonna be quite as sharp, although we could do that. We can invert it, mesh filter, and inflate. So we're able to do something like that as well start making little rounded corners like this okay. so very useful technique i figured a lot of you guys would like to see that one not real complicated but and then you do similar things in substance where you just um you can push a mask in and out using uh, levels basically or sharpen it up things like that so you're gonna use it i think quite a bit now that you know about it and you'll probably find a, a use case for it at some point or another anyways that was it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. Check you out the next one.